I've had this Japanese chef's knife for years and I really like the shape and the feel of it. So when I decided to make my own chef's knife, I figured this would be a good starting point. This Gaiuto style knife that I'm making has a more blunt tip and the handle is more angular than my old knife. I came up with the idea to give the knife a yin yang look, so later I'll add white and black micarta scales with opposing white and black pins. I want a knife that doesn't require as much maintenance as carbon steel would, so I'm gonna use Nitro V stainless steel. Now, working with stainless steel presented me with lots of challenges as the heat treatment process is very different and all the bevel grinding occurs after the heat treat. After cutting out the knife blank, I took it over to my Ameribraid 2x72 belt grinder to refine the shape. I'm still learning all about using this machine, but I've been really impressed with the build quality and how I've been able to just dive right in and learn as I go. I really can't recommend this Ameribraid grinder enough. Here I'm quickly swapping out the tool rest for the small wheel holder so I can grind in the finger notch that's at the front of the handle. Once the two quarter inch pin holes that are used to attach the scales are drilled, I added a bunch of smaller holes to reduce the handle weight, and this gives the epoxy more area to adhere to once I put it all together. Before grinding, I'm going to hammer in a texture, and this stainless is soft enough I can do this cold without having to heat it up in my forge. Alright, before moving on to grinding, I need to fully heat treat this knife, and when working with stainless, this is done by making a steel foil pouch for the knife that's going to reduce the amount of oxygen that's around the steel. Because I need to heat treat this Nitro V stainless at 1950 degrees, any oxygen around the blade can pull carbon out of the steel or decarburize it, causing it not to be as hard as what we want. This foil pouch is going to create a mostly oxygen-free environment around the knife, and it's going to prevent a lot of that decarburization. And who knew we were going to get all sciency today, but I've been really fascinated with learning all about the metallurgic arts while making this knife. Not Smithies per se, where you otherwise trained in the metallurgic arts before straightened circumstances forced you into life aimless wonders. <laughs> Here I'm adding some baby powder before placing the knife in the pouch, which should prevent the pouch from sticking to the metal during the heat treat. Now it's into the even heat oven to heat this blade up to 1950 degrees and then hold it there for 15 minutes. Here it's ready to come out and this is where things get a lot more interesting. So here I'm quenching the knife between two aluminum plates, which are literally going to suck the heat out of the knife rapidly. I also used an air hose to help this process along, and after only a minute or so, it's gone from 1,950 degrees down to about 130 degrees. Cool enough that I can safely pick it up. I cut the aluminum pouch away, and here you can see the benefits of using the baby powder as it didn't stick to the blade at all. Moving on to the handles, they're made from micarta with G10 liners. I'm going to do black with a white liner and then white with a black liner before joining the two pieces together at a 15 degree angle.
You all know I've been working with Total Boat for a while now, and I'm excited that they finally have some five-minute epoxy. I'm going to throw a link for this and everything else I use down below, as well as a discount code. The modeling clay is going to give me a way to hold the pins upright as the epoxy cures and also prevent the epoxy from leaking. I mix up some Total Boat High Performance 2 to 1 epoxy and tin in half of it black and half of it white. I picked up some of this plastic tubing, I think it's medical tubing, and a syringe, and I can use this to pull the epoxy up through the pins and then hold it there while it cures. The blade is done tempering and thankfully clamping it between those two pieces of angle iron prevented any warping. So this is only my second knife and I'm still pretty reliant on using a bevel jig. Also I had zero room for air on this knife given my schedule so this bevel jig really keeps those grinds consistent and helped me be successful on this project. First I'll rough in a steeper angle bevel and then take the grind to those marks that I just scribed in. I'm being extra careful here not to allow the knife to heat up too much by dunking it in a bucket of water after every few passes. If I was to ruin the heat treat now, I'd have to start this knife all over. I got the first grinds in without any problems, but this was definitely slow, tedious work having to grind after the heat treat. I marked out the final grind line I was aiming for, adjusted the angle of the bevel jig, and spent what ended up being about five hours standing here at the grinder grinding in all these bevels. It was five long hours where I passed the time listening to an audiobook from Audible, who's the sponsor of today's video. You all know I spent a lot of time in the shop doing very repetitive tasks like this, and I found getting lost in an audiobook helps me stay focused and sharp while absorbing knowledge, information, and even inspiration. Right now, my viewers can get your first audiobook for free, plus two Audible originals when you try Audible for 30 days. Just visit audible.com slash johnnybuilds or text johnnybuilds to 500-500. Now, Audible originals are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers from worlds as diverse as journalism, theater, literature, and more. Now, being the new year, one of my goals in 2020 is to learn 10 new build processes this year, starting with this knife that I'm making. I recently started listening to Every Tool's a Hammer by one of my favorites, Adam Savage, and it's given me the motivation to step outside my comfort zone and learn some new things. Audible is issuing a challenge to current new members. Just finish three audiobooks by March 3rd and get a $20 Amazon credit. It's really that simple. Finish three by three three and get 20 bucks. You don't have to enter anything and Audible's gonna keep track of all your progress for you. To get started, just visit audible.com slash johnnybuilds or text johnnybuilds to 500-500. Thanks, Audible. Now I've got the bevels in and I'm going to work my way up through the grits all the way to a thousand grit to get a good polish on the blade and get rid of any big scratches. Next, I did some hand sanding on the blade up to 3000 grit before using files to clean up that finger notch. Back to the handles and I clean up the excess epoxy after the first glue up and then ground in a 15 degree angle where the white and the black pieces of the handle meet. I didn't realize until later that I glued up the handle backwards and they wouldn't line up right on the knife as you see right here. I had to break them apart and grind off that G10 liner and then flip them over, reattach a liner to the opposite face of those pieces before gluing the whole thing back together. 
What's not captured is all this happened late on the day before Christmas Eve, and I had to have this knife finished as it was a gift for my girlfriend. This added about three more hours to what was already a late night, but luckily that was the worst of my troubles going forward. With the pinholes drilled into the scales, I cut them out of my bandsaw before temporarily attaching them to the knife to sand them both flush. And here I'm sanding in the taper on the front end of the scales because this area won't be accessible once they're epoxied to the knife and the blade is in the way. Okay, now I'm ready for final assembly where again I'm using five minute epoxy to put this knife together. The white pin goes in the black side and the black pin goes in the white side to create that yin yang pattern. And then I could clamp the whole thing together and let it dry overnight. The next day I cut away the excess pins and then use the belt grinder to grind in the rough shape of the handle which has a taper from the front to the back. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and if you like this video, please consider subscribing. So leading up to this project, I watched a lot of the Simple Little Life YouTube channel and he has great tutorials and explanations about knife making and several specifically about working with Nitro V Stainless. His channel was a huge help and I'll link it below and I recommend you go check it out. I'd also like to add a special thanks to my Patreon supporters, especially my top patrons, Matt Varaghese, David Britton, DFM Toolworks, Maker's Best Friend, and Lex the Historian. If you're interested in supporting this channel and the perks that come along with that, please check out my Patreon link down below. All right, thanks for checking this one out and I'll see you back here next time.